So we know that graph neural networks are permutation equivariant, but so are graph convolutions. Okay, we know that graph neural networks are stable to relative perturbation, but so are graph convolutions. Then why should we choose graph neural networks instead of being satisfied with just graph convolutions? In this segment, we will show that the answer to these questions is that GNNs are simultaneously stable and discriminative while graph convolutions are not. And thus, GNNs outperform graph filters, especially when high frequency information content is relevant. Permutation equivariance and stability are properties of both graph convolutions and GNNs. Then why bother in adding pointwise nonlinearities to create GNN? More concretely, what is good about pointwise nonlinearities, or similarly, what is wrong with linear graph convolutions? Briefly, the problem with linear graph convolutions is that they can be unstable to perturbations of the graph if we push their discriminative power. The advantage of adding pointwise nonlinearities is that they make GNNs stable to perturbations while retaining discriminability. These questions can be better answered once more with an analysis in the spectral domain, a trademark of signal processing. Recall that the effect of a graph convolution in the frequency domain is to rescale the i-th frequency coefficient tilde x sub i of the input by a corresponding value h of lambda sub i given by the filter and the i-th eigenvalue of the support, yielding the i-th frequency of the output tilde y sub i. Specifically, we will use the spectral domain to prove the stability theorem of the previous segment for a particular case. This proof of a particular case is quite illustrative, but the complete proof that leads to the actual theorem statement of the previous segment can be found in this paper written down at the bottom of the slide. The GNN stability theorem is elementary to prove for an edge dilation, that is, when we multiply edges by a 1 plus epsilon for a small epsilon close to zero. Note that epsilon measures the size of the perturbation, so if it is small, the perturbation is small and thus the output of a stable processing architecture shouldn't change much. The effect of an edge dilation is to produce a spectrum dilation where the eigenvalues of s in blue move to the eigenvalues of s hat in red. Now, in solid black line, we have the frequency response of a filter. This frequency response is Lipschitz, but not integral Lipschitz, so we wouldn't expect this filter to be stable. As a matter of fact, we see that even if epsilon is small, the largest eigenvalue on the right can change a lot, causing a big change in the output of the filter. Thus, small deformations may result in large filter variations for large lambda, and a Lipschitz filter is not stable. Integral Lipschitz filters, however, are always stable. Recall that integral Lipschitz filters can have arbitrary variations for small values of lambda, but need to be flat for large values of lambda. This forces the case where either the eigenvalues are small and therefore don't move much, that is, in parts where the filter can be arbitrarily thin, or if they are large, then the filter is the one that doesn't move. This causes the output of an integral Lipschitz filter not to change much under graph perturbations, and thus integral Lipschitz filters are stable. The problem with linear graph convolutions involving integral Lipschitz filters is that, while they are stable, they cannot discriminate features at large eigenvalues. We see here that if we want to discriminate between these two signals, one whose whole energy is located at lambda n minus 1, and the other one whose whole energy is located at lambda n, then we need filters that are narrow enough to separate both frequencies. But these filters are not integral Lipschitz. At most, they are just plain Lipschitz. So we see that when we have a small perturbation, because the eigenvalues we want to separate are large, they will fall outside of the passband in the perturbed graph. This limits the value of linear filters in machine learning problems particularly those where features at large eigenvalues are important. And this is exactly where nonlinearities come into play. The good thing about pointwise nonlinearities is that they preserve permutation equivariance while generating low graph frequency components, which we can actually discriminate with stable integral Lipschitz filters. 
essentially the nonlinearity demodulates the signal, creating low frequency content that can be discriminated in a stable manner. For example, when we apply a ReLU to the signal located at lambda n, we see here that the new content appears in low eigenvalues, and in fact, it does not change much. See the change in the precision from blue to red for low eigenvalues. We also see that this low eigenvalue content is different from the one generated by the signal located at lambda n minus one. This means that we can leverage this new low eigenvalue content created by the nonlinearity to discriminate between both signals by using only stable inter Lipschitz filters. In essence, GNNs are stable and selective information processing architecture, whereas linear graph filters are not. 